So we've been looking at suffix tries, and right away when we were introduced to the idea of suffix tries, right, the idea of putting all the suffixes of a text together into some data structure, we were immediately starting to feel anxious that this might be a large data structure. After all, if t is a long string, and the data structure has to organize all the suffixes of that string, well, the number of characters in all that suffixes is growing quadratically with the text t, with the length of the text. On the other hand, we did learn something about suffix tries, or I should say about tries in general, which is that they have prefix sharing, right? So if two of the suffixes have a shared prefix, you know, for example, this suffix starts with aba, and this suffix starts with aba, there's only one path through the try starting from the root that's labeled aba. We don't have two separate paths, even though two separate suffixes start with that same string. So it means that we can collapse the suffix try at least somewhat compared to how big it would be if we had one, um, you know, one edge for every character of every suffix. All right, so we might hope that this prefix sharing, this collapsing, is perhaps going to save us from having to experience quadratic growth in theory or in practice, one or the other or both. So let's see. And so we're going to do a few examples of families of strings that have different growth properties so that we can get to know, well, is it possible to define a family that has, for example, linear growth? Is it possible to define a simple family that has quadratic growth, etc. And then we'll see some empirical results at the end. Okay, so to this question of prefix sharing and whether it can save us, let me propose a really simple kind of string that we might want to build a suffix try of. Like, really simple, trivial. Which is a string that's just the same character repeated and then a dollar sign at the end, right? Because we always have to have a dollar sign. Um, so a way of thinking of this, a, a way of concisely writing this family of strings would be like a to the m followed by dollar sign. a to the m just being a shorthand for m a's in a row, concatenated. All right, so if I take all the suffixes of that string, uh, I get this, you know, this array of suffixes here. And as you can see, there's prefix sharing, right? There's a lot of prefix sharing because the string is so trivial, just consisting of the same character repeated, it is in some sense enjoying maximal prefix sharing, right? Any, any shared prefix consisting only of a's is shared between a pair of these suffixes. And so the suffix try, in turn, is going to have a very particular shape. It's going to kind of look like this, um, right? Because we don't need to have branching, because except for branching that branches a from dollar sign, because there's no other character, right? There's no other character besides a and dollar sign to actually branch for, right? So there's no branching in the thing. There's really just this one sort of backbone of a's, this being where all the shared prefixes live. And then there's all the dollar signs corresponding to the fact that every suffix ends in dollar sign and dollar sign is distinct from a. Um, so we can, in fact, um, just to sort of better get a handle on how big this graph is, Hopefully you can, looking at this graph, you're getting the impression that it's growing linearly with M, which it is. But we can also sort of color it in a certain way. Let's color it in this way, where I've taken red and used red to represent that backbone of A's. So there's one red node for each A in the text T. And then I've used blue to represent the nodes containing the, you know, that are the destinations of the dollar sign edges. So there's one such node for every dollar sign in that picture and then there's a root. So you can see that the length of this thing is something like 2 times m, right? The number of nodes in this try is approximately 2 times m. So it's growing linearly with m is, is my point. So we found at least one class of strings. It's a trivial class of strings, but we found one class of strings that has, in some sense, maximal prefix sharing and where, therefore, the suffix try grows linearly with the number of characters in the text. Now, we know that real strings don't, don't look like this. Right? They, do, they don't have maximal prefix sharing. They might even, let's think about this next, there might even be kinds of strings that have no prefix sharing. None. Absolutely no sharing of prefixes between suffixes. So, for example, a type of string that has no prefix sharing, you know, what would be a type of string that has no prefix sharing? 
Well, one example would be a string where every character of the string is distinct. Right? Each character is different from all the other characters. Right? So here's my, here's my text T, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then there's a dollar sign. Right? And you can imagine if there were more characters, then it would be G, H, etc. Okay, so if they're all, uh, all the characters of my text are distinct characters, then all the suffixes start with distinct characters. And that means that the suffix try looks like this, right? right? Right as soon as we leave the root, we have full branching out to the size of the alphabet. And then from then on, each of these is just a you know, chain going down to the corresponding leaf, right? And so how is the size of this try growing with the length of the string t? Well, just visually, we can see the correspondence between the two, right? Here on the left, we could draw a triangle around that, right? It would look like this. As the length of the text t gets longer, this triangle is getting bigger in its two dimensions. It's sort of like a half square, right? So it's sort of growing something like m squared over 2. Likewise, what we're seeing at the right, we could also draw a triangle here, same sized triangle around those nodes, right? Let's actually redraw those more nicely. Same growth, right? Same rate of growth, right? We're getting something like m squared over 2 growth, both on the left and on the right. So this is a class of strings, which is to say strings where every character is distinct, where very clearly the size of the suffix try is growing quadratically, you know, with m squared. It's growing with m squared. It's growing quadratically with respect to the length of the text t. Okay, but this is also not very realistic, right? Because a string where every single character is different is kind of a strange concept. Can we come up with an example that uses a small alphabet, right? It doesn't use lots of different characters in every position, um, but that also nonetheless we can argue has quadratic growth. That would be a more uh, useful example compared to this one, which seems somewhat contrived. So let's think about that. How about the alphabet consists of just two characters, let's call them A and B. Can we find uh, a family of strings drawn from that smaller alphabet where the suffix tri still grows with big O of M squared, right? It grows quadratically with the length of the string. So I'm going to argue yes, and let's just look at a really simple example where the string consists of uh, half of it is A's and half of it is B's and then there's a dollar sign on the end, right? So the string consists of A's, then B's, then dollar sign. And so as the string grows, it's still, we're, we're, we're going to say it's still half A's, half B's, and then a dollar sign. So if we look at all the suffixes of this string, they look like this, right? So we have ones that start with A for a while, and then we get past the A section, and then they all start with B. And if we bring in the suffix try, it has a particular shape. Okay, it's not an incredibly intuitive shape at first, but let me just use some color coding to establish some relationships between what we're seeing on the left versus what we're seeing on the right. So first of all, part of what we're seeing on the right are nodes that have dollar sign incoming edges. Right? So we can create immediately a relationship between the dollar signs in the suffixes on the left and the nodes on the right that are the destination of the edges labeled dollar sign. Okay, so that subset of the nodes is is not growing quadratically, right? It's just growing with the it's just growing with m, right? The number of leaves grows quite quite uh, directly with m, right? So that there's nothing quadratic going on if we just consider that subset of the nodes. Okay, now let's look at a couple more subsets of the nodes. Okay, there's the nodes that constitute this sort of chain of B's, which are the, is the chain of B's that corresponds to the suffixes that start with B, right, this, this chunk of the triangle down here. And as you can see, this is growing linearly with the number of B's, right? There's three B's and here's three nodes, right? So it's, it's, that part of the tri also seems to be growing in direct proportion to the number of B's in the input string. So it's growing with it's growing linearly with M. Likewise here, we see a few nodes that correspond to these suffixes that start with A's. Again, it's growing linearly with the number of A's. So where things get interesting is if we look in here, right, in that part. Because this is the section where 
we have a chain of b's for every suffix that starts with any number of a's. So we have a chain of b's for every suffix that starts with any number of a's. That corresponds to this part of the diagram on the left, right? The number of b's in this kind of like square here. And as you can see, the number of nodes is actually directly proportional to the number of b's in this square, but the number of b's in that square would grow quadratically as we grow m, right? Again, if I just sort of notionally draw a square around this whole thing, we're talking about a quarter of that square approximately. So that's growing with something like m over 2 squared, okay? So that part of the suffix tri, the part that consists of these b chains that come after one or more a's, that part is going to grow quadratically with m. So there, we came up with an example that doesn't have, you know, that was less trivial. It doesn't have a distinct character in each position, but nonetheless, it grows quadratically with the length m. Okay, so we've convinced ourselves that it's not too hard to find families of strings, types of strings, for which the suffix tri is growing quadratically with the length of the input string. However, these were all certain constructed families, families that we came up with to prove a point. They don't necessarily represent what real data will do when we take a real, let's say, genome sequence, right, since I'm a a, a computational genomics guy, I am usually thinking about genomes when I think about what to index with these data structures. So what would happen if we put a real genome sequence into a suffix try, maybe even put in longer and longer and longer genome sequences, like let m grow, in other words, let the length of the string get longer, and then ask for each value of m that we try, how big is the suffix try? How many nodes and edges does the suffix try have? Or let's just go with how many nodes does the suffix try have? So here we go. I did an empirical experiment where I took a relatively short genome. It's a virus genome of, of a virus called lambdaphage. I took the first 500 prefixes. So I took the prefix of length 1, the prefix of length 2, of length 3, of length 4, all the way up to the prefix of length 500. So these are all just prefixes of this viral genome sequence. Because it's genomic sequence, it consists of A, C's, G's, and T's. And I'm going to draw three curves. I'm not showing them to you yet, but the red curve corresponds to the maximum number of nodes we, would, we could possibly expect. The blue curve is going to correspond to the minimum number of nodes we could possibly expect. Right? These sort of correspond to those first two cases we looked at. Maximal prefix sharing, no prefix sharing. And then I'm going to draw a black line, which corresponds to what I actually measured in the case of this particular genome sequence, the suffix tries I built of this particular genome sequence. Well, now we know that the red line is going to be a, su a super linear line, right? This is a line growing quadratically. It's going to look kind of like that, right? We know it's going to go up faster than linearly. The blue line is not going to go up faster than linearly. It's going to go up linearly. It is, however, going to be pretty compressed, right? Because if you just look at the scale of the axes, right, this axis, you know, I, I needed room to accommodate the red line, so the scale of this axis is really big compared to the scale of this axis. So that blue thing is going to kind of look horizontal, but it's not really. It has some slope. Um, it has a slope of 2, basically. And then the question is, where's the black line going to go? Where's the black line going to go, right? So what do you think? If you're an optimist, you might say, well, I think that even though we're not going to get perfect prefix sharing, the prefix sharing will still be pretty good. It'll be close to ideal. And if the prefix sharing is close to ideal, then the black line will be down here hugging the blue line. Okay, I, should, I should make sure I'm drawing it above the blue line, but like maybe close to it. Right? That would be sort of ideal. Or you might be a pessimist and you say, Prefix sharing is going to do almost nothing to reduce the size of the suffix try, reduce the number of nodes in the suffix try, and therefore the black line is going to hug the red line. Right? It's just going to be maybe slightly below the red line, look like, looking like that. Or you could be somewhere in between, right? You could be sort of a compromised person. You say maybe it'll be in between the red and the blue and it'll look like that. So you can sort of think about it yourself, and now I'll show you what the real experiment showed which is that the pessimists were right. You know, so the black line is extremely close to the red line. In other words, prefix sharing does very little 
to reduce the size of the suffix tri relative to the worst case size of the suffix tri. Okay, so this is this is bad news, right? It means that in practice, you know, if you believe that my genome sequence scenario is, a, is an example of a practical scenario, then in a practical scenario, the size of the suffix tri is very close to the worst case, and prefix sharing does not do very much to save us from the worst case size of the data structure. Okay, so the actual growth is much closer to the worst case than the best, and hmm, that's not very good news for the suffix tri. And again, because my focus is on genomes, I'm usually thinking about indexing things like human genomes. The human genome, depending on how you count, but usually the way we count is we'd say the human genome is about 3 billion letters long. So 3 billion A, C's, G's, and T's in a row. That's all the chromosomes of the human genome. So if it turns out that the size of the um, suffix tri that we would need to build in order to index the human genome is on the order of m squared, and m is 3 billion, well, m squared is going to be something times 10 to the 18, which is just an enormous number. It will be a data structure that we really cannot realistically expect to fit into memory on a, on a even, even on a rather big computer. Um, so this is bad news for the suffix try. The suffix try was still the right place to start, though, because from the suffix try, we're going to be able to make a move into a data structure that won't be this big. And that's really what the next video is about, is how do we start from the suffix try, but shrink it to get a structure that still allows us to do the sorts of queries we discussed, but is much smaller.